Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night service, our midweek service. I've been considering Psalm 113, verse 3, from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. All of our hours, all of our days, all of our life, with all our being, we want to praise the Lord. He's worthy of our praise. We want to praise Him in every way. We want to worship Him. The Father seeks worshipers, and through the Holy Spirit, we want to be those that, that bless and praise the true and living God. Let's pray. Tonight, we're going to hear about you. Tonight, we're going to be taught. Tonight, we're going to sing and praise you. May we bless you. May we honor you. Oh, God, you are mighty. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, you are worthy to be praised. Amen. Good evening and welcome. We'd like to invite you tonight to join us in praise and worship. Give unto the Lord, all ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory to his name and worship him in holiness. Give unto the Lord, all ye mighty. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory to his name and worship him in holiness. The Lord shall rise upon me as you lift your eyes unto him. The glory of the Lord shall be seen upon thee. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. When the enemy comes like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall make him flee. For we know the victory is won. Rejoice in the Lord and declare the victory. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, but the Lord shall rise upon thee. As you lift your eyes unto him, the glory of the Lord shall be seen upon thee. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. When the enemy comes like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall make him flee. For we know the victory is won. Rejoice in the Lord and declare the victory. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Ah, Lord God, Thou hast made the heavens and the earth by Thy great power. Ah, Lord God, Thou hast made the heavens and the earth by Thine outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for Thee. Nothing is too difficult for Thee. O great and mighty God, great in counsel, mighty indeed. Nothing, nothing. Absolutely. 
absolutely nothing, nothing is too difficult for thee. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Ah, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thine outstretched arm. Nothing is too difficult for thee, nothing is too difficult for thee, O great and mighty God, great in counsel, mighty indeed. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, nothing is too difficult for thee. Nothing is too difficult for thee, nothing is too difficult for thee, O great and mighty God. Good evening. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. 
Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for thank you that you see us no matter where we are at. Lord, we have mountaintop experience, we have valley experiences, but Lord, you are ever with us. And Lord, we pray that you would meet with uh, those who are uh, gathered to watch this message tonight. We pray that those that are not that, that those that are not able to, Lord, that you administer life to them. Lord, that you draw them by your spirit. Lord, we pray that for those that are not feeling well in the body, Lord, we pray that your hand of healing would be upon them. Lord, we pray for the message that uh, as we hear about um, the, the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you would um, uh, speak a word to our heart and cause it to bring forth fruit and cause us to learn something new of you. And we pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening. Tonight we want to look at what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. So in my introduction, I want to make it clear that we're just giving a really brief glance at what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. Really just an appetizer. If, if you want to learn what the Holy Spirit uh, is like, it's a lifetime activity because he's God. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we really want to know the Holy Spirit. Our desire is that this message, this appetizer, will encourage us to study more, study concerning the Holy Spirit, to seek the mind of the Holy Spirit, and to keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. We serve one God, yet he's a triune God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Scripture clearly points out the Trinity in Matthew 3, 16 through 17. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. So let's look again, or closely, at Matthew 3, 16 through 17. Who was it that was baptized? Well, it was Jesus. Who was it that proclaimed Jesus to be his Son? It was the Father. And who came on Jesus like a dove? It was the Holy Spirit. So we see in this scripture, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We also see the Trinity when considering the crucifixion. That can be found in many portions, but let's look at Hebrews 9, 14. How much more will the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. It's the blood of Jesus that purifies our conscience. This enables us to serve the living God, the Father. It was through the eternal spirit, the Holy Spirit, that Jesus offered himself. With this reference and many more, we come to know that the Holy Spirit is at work, at work to see the purposes of God fulfilled. Throughout our lives, we'll have the Holy Spirit nudging us. We'll have the Holy Spirit speaking to us. We'll have the Holy Spirit bringing us into purposes that we can fulfill the desires and the longings of God. The Holy Spirit will enable us and quicken us to be obedient children unto God. As with the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit is a person. He's not just an influence, and Jesus taught us this in John 15, 26. This Holy Spirit is referred in Scripture in many different ways. Some of them are the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, the spirit of judgment, the spirit of burning, the spirit of truth, the spirit of life, the spirit of adoption, 
the Holy Spirit of promise, the Spirit of grace, the Spirit of glory. That's a long list. And, and as you know, the list is not complete. So I believe the Lord would have us to consider these things as we do our daily Bible reading, as we do our daily Bible study, look for references referring to the Holy Spirit. We also realize that as we're reading the scriptures, it's the Holy Spirit that quickens them to us. It's the Holy Spirit that puts them in our heart. Sometimes we'll be reading the Bible and something will seem to be underlined. It's like God speaking to us. Well, God uses the Holy Spirit to speak to us as we read the scriptures. Also in the scriptures, the Holy Spirit is recognized by symbols. The dove, oil, fire, wind, water, light, and even more. We're not saying that every time one of these items is mentioned, it refers to the Holy Spirit, but many times it does. We know that the Holy Spirit, as we read earlier, came on Jesus as a dove. Well, we briefly looked into the Holy Spirit, who he is, and how he can be recognized in, in scriptures. Let's consider what does the Holy Spirit do? He's really busy. He's really productive. And when I'm really busy and I'm really productive, sometimes I feel overloaded. Think about it, though. Is the Holy Spirit ever overloaded? He's not. The Holy Spirit knows everything. The Holy Spirit is all-powerful. And the Holy Spirit is everywhere. Doesn't that sound like God? It should because the Holy Spirit is God. Jesus spoke of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Let's look what Jesus had to say in John 14, 16 through 17. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. Now, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit is to be our helper. This can also be referred to as the comforter. The thought of a helper, the thought of a comforter, is one that's called to the side of another. Called to the side of another to help. One that intercedes on the behalf of another. I'd like to share an example, and unfortunately, I'm, I'm sure that you can align with me in this example. More than once, really many times, I've, I've called a company, uh, an insurance agent, or uh, someone to ask for help with something I needed assistance with. Sometimes the, the person I'm talking to just doesn't understand my question. Like, they'll say, I, I don't know what you're trying to say. Other times, they understand what I'm saying, but they don't know the answer. They'll say, oh, I see you have a problem, but I don't know what your answer is. There's also been times when there's a bad phone connection and nothing makes sense. And the phone call is of, of no value whatsoever. I would have been better just not to call in the, in the first place. And that's the limitations we have. None of these limitations are true with the comforter, with the helper, with the one that wants to be near to us, with the one that wants to intercede in our behalf. He wants to be near, and he has all the answers we need. He always gives the right answer. It's impossible for him to do otherwise. Jesus points that out by saying, he is the spirit of truth. Let's look what Jesus had to say concerning the spirit of truth in John 16, 13 through 14. And when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. 
and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Holy Spirit reveals to us the mind of God. It seems to me that in the day we're living that there's a lot of questions. And this is true of the saved and the unsaved. Uh, the question, or one question is, how do I prepare for the days ahead? I believe the saved and unsaved are even asking that. And that's an important question. And if you listen to the news, listen to other people, there's so many opinions. We want the Holy Spirit of opinion. He's the spirit of truth. He's the one that will guide us into all truth. He is the one who will glorify and speak of Jesus. Truth is so much more than information. In studying, in doing research, in obtaining knowledge, these things are, are a good thing. Yet the scriptures, when the thought of truth is proclaimed, is so much more than facts. King David asked the Lord for, for truth, and let's read about it in Psalm 51, verse 6. Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. David isn't just asking for truth. He doesn't want to just know the truth, but he wants to know it in the inward being. He wants to know uh, truth in the secret heart. How is this accomplished? It's accomplished through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who imparts truth to us, truth in the inward being, truth in the secret heart. The Holy Spirit declares the things of God to us. As John 16 says, even things that are yet to come. The Holy Spirit is a good teacher. A good teacher must fully understand the material. Does the Holy Spirit understand the material? He's God. He knows everything. He certainly does. A good teacher has a good ability to impart to his students. Can the Holy Spirit bring across the message that he's giving to us? He can. He delivers it to us. He's skillful. A good teacher considers the learning style of the student. We've all sat in classes and the teacher just may not teach in our style and it makes it hard to learn or hard to understand. Well, the Holy Spirit understands how we can best receive what's being taught. He knows how to bring it across in our lives so we can comprehend it. He, he desires us to, to learn, to understand, to be full of wisdom. And not only will he give us good advice, he gives us the ability, the desire, the longing to receive it because he's working in our lives. And the Holy Spirit will remind us of truth. We've all had people tell us and teach us and train us. And then maybe years later, we'll say, now, what did they say? Or how does this work? Or what did the instructions have to say? Well, the Holy Spirit will bring to our remembrance the good things that uh, God has spoken to us. There will be times where God will meet with us, and then perhaps years later, the Holy Spirit will bring it to our memory. We've all had times where we've read scriptures, and then the Holy Spirit will quicken us with them time later. The Holy Spirit will bring to us what we have need of. The Holy Spirit wants to move upon his people to, to fill us and to keep on filling us. Prior to salvation, at salvation, and throughout one's life, the Holy Spirit is present. The Lord is, is there through the Holy Spirit. There's the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is a separate event from salvation. In Acts 2, on the day of Pentecost, there was the sound of a mighty rushing wind. Well, that was the Holy Spirit. He filled the room. 
Then those in the upper room were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is referring specifically to the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Another event that is ongoing is the filling of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5 verse 18, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. This is not a one-time event, but it is a continual event. The thought of being filled with the Spirit is the idea of keep on being filled, like topping off a, a glass of water again and again. We see the early church as, a, as an example when considering the thought of keep on being filled. Now, they had met with God. The Holy Spirit was with them. The Holy Spirit was in them. They had been baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then we come to Acts 4, verse 31. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continue to speak the word of God with boldness. Being filled with Holy Spirit is something we should earnestly desire, a, a lifelong uh, endeavor, a lifelong happening in our life. In the morning when we wake up, oh Holy Spirit, fill me. Throughout the day, oh Holy Spirit, help me. Uh, in the evening, we give thanks to God for the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. Now I'm closing out the message, and in closing out we want a little review. And the review is with a thought of, what do we do with this message? There were some good points brought out of how the Holy Spirit is, is God, part of the triune God, how the Holy Spirit will show us the things of Jesus, how the Holy Spirit will show us the things of God and work in our lives. But what do we do with all this? We want to keep being filled with the Spirit of God. Keep being filled with the one who enables us. Keep being filled with the one who shows us and brings us to the truth. Keep being filled with the one who is part of the Trinity, the one who is God. How do we do this? How do we keep on being filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, I believe there's many ways, and we're just going to mention a few, but we want to find ourselves in the Scriptures. As we find ourselves in the Scriptures, our heart is tender and receives instructions, and the Holy Spirit will speak to us and fill us uh, with scriptures and fill us with his presence. We also want to obey and walk in what has already been given to us. The Holy Spirit will quicken things. The Holy Spirit will give us instructions. Well, are we obeying what he's given us? Uh, the kids will say, I want more food. Well, you haven't ate your broccoli yet. Eat your broccoli, and then you get more. And I believe that does apply to the things of God. The Holy Spirit will give us instructions, and we want those instructions, but we also want to keep them so he can give us more. We want to pray. Pray in English, if that's your native language, and pray in tongues, which comes through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then looking at one last way to be full of the uh, Spirit of God, and, and God will quicken many things, but the thought of praise and worship. The, these create an atmosphere of the Holy Spirit. Praise and worship will bring in the Spirit of God. Pray, praise, worship. Individually, in the morning when we wake up, throughout the day, also in a group setting, in church, it's, it's very important that we come together and we worship the Lord, that we meet with him so the Holy Spirit can keep our heart tender and soft so we can be like David, that he'll teach us truth in the inward parts. Let's pray. Oh God, our desire is to be full 
of the Holy Spirit. Our desire is not grieve the Holy Spirit. Our desire is to heed and listen and to follow the, the promptings of the Holy Spirit. We say yes to the Holy Spirit. By your grace, by your power, we want to keep on being filled. Oh God, bless us like only you can. Thank you. Amen. The Lord bless you. Oh God, thank you that you send the Holy Spirit to watch over us, to keep us. And we ask for each one of us that you would watch over us, you would keep us, you would give us hearts after you. May we be led by the Holy Spirit. May we be full of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that you bring nothing but good things our way. Amen.